this is Dorothy with Dot Scrapbooking, and this is what I'm going to be making today. This sketch is from the Atlantic Heart Sketch Challenge, 492. And I used this real cute daisy and dragonfly stamp thin cut and stencil set. And I love this stencil set because the you can what you can do with the dragonfly wings is just endless. So let me show you how. Oh, and I also use this really cute background for the card that looks like little butterflies or dragonflies flying around. It's their, their contrail, as it were. Here we go. Okay, so here is the sketch. So it's number 492. And that is the basic sketch, and I'm going to be using the colors from the Color color My Heart, Color Dare Challenge. So this is the wonderful thin cut. It's Dragonfly Wishes. And uh, it has the dragonflies and those corner parts with cattails and daisies. And I'm going to use the daisy one, but you get the three sizes of dragonflies, along with the cattails and a little... Uh, backdrop for the thank you and those are the stencils so I love this cute little stitched uh, bug or but butterfly it could even be a hot air balloon it could be an airplane but those are the kind of the contrails of whatever is leaving the trail I'm using a piece from the picture my life the Chris Bear picture my life cards and I cut it down to three by four so I've gone I've gone ahead and I've got my my stamps set up on my three by three block and the other one is a two and a half by two and a half block usually they're marked that might be a really old block but it's two and a half by two and a half so I'm going to use my flip side of my layout mat and it's a real soft foam, so it makes a real good, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, inking impression. You get a nice even pushback when you're pushing down on the stamp. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I've got my stamp seasoned correctly. And um, i got a lot of ink on one side, but it looks like it's ready to go. So I'm just lining it up real carefully and giving it a good three to five second push on it to give some time for the ink to absorb into the cardstock. So I'm going to set that aside. I've got quite a bit of ink on that one side. Must have been more strength on one side of my hand than the other. And here's the dragonfly. Are those wings not just beautiful? Talk about flying on gossamer wings. So I'm going to go ahead and line up my dragonfly and stamp it. This is the medium size. So I just put it right down there, hold it in place for a little bit. And it came out great. So I'm just going to set those aside for a little bit and uh, let them dry. doesn't take long. I'm putting Tombow on the opposite side of the card front. Now this is for an A2 card, so it's when you cut it with the uh, die cut machine, it gives you a perfect four and a quarter by five and a half inch front to go on the front of your card. So like I said, that was three by four and the white piece is a quarter of an inch shorter on each side. So it's uh, two and three quarters by three and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down. And then I'm just going to place that in the center. And I love those little twirly patterns for like a bug flying. Or it could be a bird. And like I said, it could be a plane doing loop-de-loops, having fun on a nice calm day. So I'm going to go ahead and the uh, sketch will show you that they have two, two uh, strips going along the bottom there. So I'm going to go ahead 
and just trim off the angled edge to make a flat edge. And I'm going to go ahead and make it the length of the white cardstock, so three and three fourths. And I didn't leave a tail, and so when you don't leave a tail, you have to kind of search for the be getting between the uh, shimmer tape and the, the backing. So I happen to have, it calls for two pieces, and I happen to have some white there. And so I'm kind of doing, you know, not a huge amount of color, so I'm kind of doing a lot of white on white here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bat. A bat Mm, uh, or a dovetail cut. I want to call it a banner cut or a dovetail cut on the white. And I kind of like that. Instead of adding more color to it, it's kind of nice to just um, add more white. And so I'm using the Alpine Green Blend and the Gold Yellow Blend. And uh, it's not a lot of shading here because the parts are are pretty small and narrow. So I'm just kind of following the stems and the narrow leaves. And I kind of wanted to add some other colors, some other green to it. But eh, I don't know, that dark green kind of kind of says it says it all. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in my uh stems and my leaves here. So the the nice sharp points on the tri-blend markers really make it easy to do those finer lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm trying to make sure I'm getting all the parts that should be green. Sometimes you kind of mess up and think, oh. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, medium color to make the darker centers of these daisies. I'm not sure what kind of daisies these are, but they're going to be yellow daisies or gold daisies. <clears throat> and this pretty much looks gold. Uh, there's there's uh, definitely a gold hue, so it's a little bit of a mixture of orange and yellow in my eye. So they call it a gold-yellow blend. And that's good. This kind of, you know, it kind of has kind of a fall feel to it, to me. So these are the colors, the uh, kind of pine and Sundance. The Sundance is kind of a gold, goldish yellow, maybe with a touch of kind of an orange shade in there. Anyway, that's um, what I'm using. Unknown oh, caller. Silly phone. Sorry about that. So I'm going going ahead and coloring the all the petals. So the centers are a little bit darker than the petals are. And I could have even made them, you know, a nice dark brown. And I'm adding a little green down there. I don't know that It's okay to have a little contrast. But I just, you know, I continued to see some parts that I kind of missed. And then I had a yellow um, kind of citrus color there. And I decided to go over all the petals with the yellow to kind of blend it out, give it a little bit slightly brighter color. So, you know, I mean, once you start once you start mixing colors and blending things, you kind of want to do it more. So you kind of want to do it, do it as much as you can. And I don't like the way those white edges look. So I am going to go ahead and use my, my rail trimmer here to get rid of that little white edge. So just a tad, maybe eighth of a sixteenth of an inch. So, and I want to go th right there in the center. I mean, right there in the very corner. And I'm going to put it down flat. So I'm putting, getting some good, pretty good coverage on there. And I love how that just sits right there. And the background, that pine background going around the white, um, just really kind of settles that whole 
green corner there. It's a real good, I think it's a real good blend. So I kind of decided I wanted to play around with the stencil first. And I got out um, the coral and uh, maybe a mustard yellow and decided to play first with, with these stencils. Gosh, I really love these stencils. God, it just makes you look like you know what you're doing. And it's really pretty. I love that. But I kind of want to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to do this rough cut and kind of say, okay, is that the cut? Is that the look that I want there? And um, I don't know. I have, I also have from something that I had done a couple of days ago, I had my spiced marmalade and uh, fossilized amber. So those are a little bit more subtle than the other two colors. And you think, well, that doesn't really make that much difference. But it sort of does. So I'm going to take take the uh, spiced mar marble and the fossilized amber and kind of go over. And see, it's just a little bit, just a tad less bright looking. And I decided that's the look that I want. So I go ahead and get my little dragonfly and start going for it. So I'm not going to tape this down or anything, which it's kind of risky. And I'm going over the entire wing with the amber. That's what I decided to do. And then I just decided to add some of the spiced marmalade on the edges, on the tips. And I really like it. So that's a really bright orange. And I have to tell you, I had a dragonfly that their entire body and their wings was that deep orange look. And he was a spectacular bug, absolutely beautiful, looked completely unreal. And he was sitting on one of, the, one of my shepherd's hooks that was holding my um, hummingbird feeder in the back. And it's like, I couldn't even believe this bug. He was just so beautiful. But I tell you, if you really want to see some beautiful dragonflies and um, oh, what's the other little one, the smaller one that, that um, is just finer. Anyway, if you go to the edge of a pond where there's a lot of tall grasses, those bugs will be all over, the dragonflies will be all over, and you can get some really wonderful little pictures of these little critters. And I just, I think they happen to be really lovely. Just such beautiful wings. So I put him on there, and I'm trying to see. So I've got this thankful. Now, this is a thin cut also that came with, uh, it was a thin cut, and it's inexpensive. It's $12.95, uh, considering that grateful and thankful are two words that you can use on cards or even on your scrapbook pages um, endlessly. And um, so I cut those uh, uh, weeks ago, and I cut like four, three to four pieces of the thankful and grateful, and then I stacked them. And so that feels like cards, like um, the stuff that's thicker than cardstock. So I kind of like that. Nothing really sticks out against the flowers unless I put a background on it, which I could, but I don't want to cover up my flowers either. So I decided it doesn't really, you know, it's not really part of the sketch, but I'm going to put it down in the lower corner to not hide my flowers. So I just love my little dragonfly and daisy scene. Oops, oops, oops. So you can see that it's thick and very easy to handle because it's so thick. So I am just putting my little thankful right down there. And what I want to do, because I've got the gold shimmer, 
on there. I'm going to put some gold gems up in the corner. That is part of the suggestion on the sketch, but it just finishes that corner off nicely. So we have the opposite corners. And I'm going to get a little of my gold shimmer brush, make a little pool, and color the body in gold. And just kind of dot some of the shimmer brush, the gold shimmer brush, around on these beautiful wings. Goodness gracious. And then, of course, you know, here it goes. Too much is not enough. So I have to start adding some gold shimmer to the, to the flowers, of course. So I'm adding it to the centers of the flowers. And then, because you can never have too much shiny stuff, I'm going to get my clear shimmer brush and just dot it. And in my brain, that is morning dew, ladies. So it's very subtle, but when somebody looks at it, when they get it, they'll be able to see the little shimmer that's, that's there. So there's my card. So now, of course, I've got to dress up my envelope a little bit. So I'm going to do, do a um, second generation, just so it doesn't look super inky. There's Ginger. So there's my second generation. Didn't come out perfect. I should have flipped my mat over to... Uh, I'm going to put my dragonfly there. And he doesn't come out. I can't see the top wings. So I'm just going to go ahead and do him again. And he kind of looks like he's in motion. So, and that's, I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. So there's my little card and my envelope to match. And uh, I hope you like that. So I hope that if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and um, feel free to leave a comment or a thumbs up or, you know, whatever you'd like. And uh, I would appreciate hearing from you. Still not used to my new setup here. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting my camera to move down. So we've got Alpine and Yellow Gold Blend shimmer uh, tri-blend markers that I used. And the Distressed Oxides are Spice Marmalade, Fossilized Amber, and the Gold and the White Shimmer Trim. Those are the supplies, along with my Thin Cuts. So hopefully give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Okay, so... I kind of thought, well, I didn't, I usually decorate the back, so I did that with the small dragonfly, and I used the spiced marmalade, and I just put him in the spiced marmalade and stamped him, and it's called um, stitched, what is it called? Oh, please flip it over so I can read it again. Anyway, it's available. And uh, this is the Dragonfly Wishes that comes with stamp set, a thin cut, and the stencils. And i um, especially fond of, fond of that. And I will tell you that I couldn't find my thin cuts, my grateful and thankful thin cuts, but they are available today and tomorrow. And after that, I don't know until, you know, they run out. But that is, not in the, that is not in the core catalog. So these, um, if they're still available, they won't be available for much longer. And I just think for $12.95, that's a good deal. So I'm just trying to see if they're, see, I bought that. So I'm trying to see if they're in here, and I could not, going to my thin cut area, there's the alphabets, all sorts of alphabets. Embossing, which I really like the, both of those things. I have the sunburst. Um, there's all the thin cuts, more thin cuts. 
But see, it doesn't say thankful and grateful. So it would be a great thing to have to make thank Thanksgiving cards. Also uh, to get ready to make. Got that. Got that. <laughs> Oop, I spent some money. Um, to make Thanksgiving cards. Yep, got that and got that. Yeah. Oy. So um, I would get it now. So And you can make uh, thankful cards for Christmas gifts, you know, sending out thanks, and also Christmas. I mean, Christmas. Okay, that is called a stitched swirl background, and I did not see that in the core catalog, so I'm thinking it's just uh, available until it's sold out also, which I like that little background. So anyway, here's my card, and uh, I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching. Bye now.